Welcome to our new digital dialogue series powered by McCafe. This is a recorded session and will be available on our website, which is cionews.co.in and our CIO News LinkedIn handle. I'm extremely delighted to invite our guest for today, uh, Mr. Vinod Bhatt, Chief Information Officer at Tata SIA Airlines. Uh, Mr. Bhatt is a business leader with 28 years of extensive experience in driving digital business transformations, leveraging digital technologies, managing relationships at CX11, PNL ownership for global business, driving business strategy, planning, sales, delivery, operations with deep understanding of the industry and global team dynamics. Uh, Mr. Bhatt is an experienced leader in delivering business transformation engagements for customers in a global outsourcing model leveraging digital technologies uh, with a global ex exposure of, um, you know, in regions like US, Canada, UK, Europe, APAC uh, geographies for more than 15 years. Uh, Mr. Bhatt, it's an absolute pleasure to have you today. Thank you for having me, Kushbu. Pleasure. Uh, so along with me today is uh, Dalush uh, Ashari, the Head Enterprise Business at McCafe for South Asia. Uh, Dalush is the Head of Pre-Sales Engineering across Asia-Pacific region at McCafe with, uh, uh, from, since 2010 and based in Sydney. Uh, Dalush is responsible for engineering and technical operations in the Asia-Pacific region for McCafe. His team is also responsible for developing technical field resources used within McCafe. He's an IT industry veteran with more than 30 years of rich experience in range of enterprise class disciplines and multinational IT solution providers. Uh, Darish, it's a pleasure to have you. Pleasure is all mine and thank you for having me. Uh, my next question is around uh, SASE. Uh, so, Mr. Part, uh, you know, getting your thoughts on this as organizations, you know, seek to accelerate the growth uh, through use of cloud, more data, users, devices, application, and services, and are used outside the traditional uh, enterprise premises. Um, and also, according to the Gartner, securing the risk management leaders need of converged cloud delivered secure access services edge, which is the SASE, to address the shift. What are your suggestions to the other IT leaders uh, for the fastest route to SASE? Yes, uh, Kushbu, I think uh, for secure access service edge of SASE, uh, I think it is, uh, I would say, conceptually as as uh, you know, from business point of view, very important uh, to uh, have that you know framework in place and the approach in place. So, if I had to uh, you know other IT leaders, what can I suggest in terms of getting into the fastest route to uh, SASEs? I think they need to look at their digital landscape completely uh, in terms of technology stack which they have got, and also what are the security requirements for their business. I think they need to benchmark. A lot of businesses I have seen, a lot of companies I have seen, they still don't have. A, uh, benchmark their uh, requirements, benchmark their technology architecture, benchmark their uh, investments, which they have done over the years. Because as I said, the last 18 months have been very different. Uh, so that is the exercise. A lot of companies are doing it today, uh, but they need to they need to look at that, and they need to look at what are the policies. A lot of you no, know, a lot of people, a lot of companies had policies within the premise within the organization which did not include cloud adoption. So that whole uh, flexibility in security policies, which includes the, what are the standards which you need to do. Uh, also the whole uh, complexity re reduction, because uh, you know if you look at the SASE gives you opportunity to streamline the uh, landscape, to reduce the complexity in terms of products, in terms of manual interventions. I think that uh, the second thing which they really need to look at. Uh, also look at the overall business case in terms of cost that uh, you know once, you look, put all the things, uh, you know, in the perspective, look at that, 
is the unified platform going to help in terms of services in terms of auto scaling uh, and also the performance requirements. A lot of these applications uh, really need uh, you know for faster performance. It's easy to use. I think that also should be put as part of the requirements. And uh, all those critical apps where you need zero trust, where you need uh, you know, access to, through the role based, uh, where you need to make sure that you know the uh, you know information is uh, secured over the network also. Uh, whether it is at the application layer, at the database layer, at the storage layer, and also there are enough audit trails left, which which can be integrated, which can be filtered, which can be analyzed, and so that the alerts can be generated, threats can be analyzed, and uh, there is a proper centralized policy, uh, not towards uh, towards the whole user management, uh, which is uh, whether it is IAM or it is PAM privilege access management. Uh, I think those are the things which they need to do and move towards have an approach, have a framework, which may be a version 1.0, SASE 1.0 approach. I think that's fine. Uh, and eventually it will be a journey. It will not be done overnight because the organization has to also take certain decisions in terms of products, in terms of priorities, in terms of investments. I think that will be left uh, to the leaders, to the board to decide. But this approach towards uh, you know, uh, creating a SASE framework uh, and also having the quick wins where we see the vulnerabilities are more, and this is must have. Uh, yeah. For example, we call you know, cyber hygiene. There's a basic cyber hygiene which you need to have in this new era. I think that the leader, security leader should push hard and get the approvals and get it in place as soon as possible. Those are my thoughts on that, Kujbu. So wonderful insights. Um... You know, Danish, even from your end, would love to hear since you interact with a lot of uh, security leaders. Uh, give your thoughts on this area. Sure. You know, I spend a significant amount of time talking to professionals and cybersecurity practitioners that now they've got a whole new challenge and leveraging the cloud. And um, as mentioned, there are many benefits by adopting different capabilities within the cloud. It's agile, it's fast, it's cost effective, and it can move in the pace that you do. Nevertheless, it's challenged the traditional thinking of how we apply cybersecurity controls. Um, so the journey to the cloud, it's not an overnight, it's an ongoing journey. And the decision made along the way need to be made appropriately so they complement each other and the security posture over time gets better and better. As we relocate data to the cloud, as we relocate applications to the cloud, as we relocate infrastructure, containers and servers and workload to the cloud, we need to understand that the decision made today, let's say to embrace a secure gateway bay or, or cloud as access security broker has implication on how do I go and control data between cloud architecture itself, right? Also, we're in this whole new world of shared responsibility model. So when I embrace that architecture within AWS or Azure or other cloud providers, they are responsible to provide me to certain level of security capabilities. Then I have to know where that watermark is and where do I go and complement it. And that watermark is different from one cloud service provider to another. When I take my uh, server load to the, to the cloud itself, that watermark changes. So our approach is a holistic platform approach, a unified platform approach that allows you to enable capabilities you need right away and grow with you and complement it with third-party capabilities because there is no silver bullet. You cannot just buy everything from one vendor, but having an open and integrated platform is key that you can bring your own capabilities in-house or third-party to complete the picture. Great, awesome. Uh... So my next question is, uh, Mr. Bhatt, lately we've observed that, you know, organization data flows across endpoint cloud and web in real time. Uh, what is your data protection strategy uh, for the complete visibility and control of organization data from device to cloud? See, I think first of all, uh, uh, there has to be a centralized access control policy. Know, across the user base, across the applications, across the network. I think that's very important for the authentication, the password, access, everything. I think that's the first thing we have done. Uh, we have made sure that there's a centralized uh, across the devices, across the network, across the apps. And then there is the zero trust model where you need to have access only based on your role. 
and it has enabled through PAM and other uh, you know, devices or uh, solutions. And then we also assess continuously the, the, the risk, uh, which is through the threats, uh, which is uh, you know, threat intelligence feeds, which you get, uh, the incident triaging, which we do, uh, and also the whole security operation center, which does the analysis on the false positives, true positives, and there is 27 uh, security event monitoring in terms of who is using data, in terms of relating the, collecting the data, normalizing the data, correlating the data. So a lot of analytics based on AI is done on the, from the devices to the network. Uh, and then accordingly, you raise the security alerts. If there is any uh, deviations, you raise the security incidents, you, uh, you know. And there is a proper, uh, I would say, parameters. All the parameters in security dashboard are critically reviewed and monitored and displayed through the, you know, on the screens as well as uh, you know through the reports. So and uh, and the, obviously it is more automated, more machine driven as much as we can. Uh, and if there are some uh, cases where we need to, you know, have the analysis, so that is done as an exception. But most of it is, uh, you know, automated and also. The policies are, uh, you know, frequently updated. The threat intelligence uh, feeds are done because the, it changes almost every day, and uh, and keeping the architecture more scalable so that if one part of uh, the data is compromised, so how does not have impact on the other other parts of the enterprise, the app, or the customer? So that is the other strategy which we uh, you know, adopt as part of uh, securing the uh, you know the data from a device to the cloud. Okay, awesome. I think uh, these have been wonderful insights. I'm sure our viewers are going to get uh, you know good information from these uh, this interview today. So I would like to thank uh, both of you. Thank you, Mr. Bart. Thank you, Dariush, for joining us today uh, on this platform for this interview and sharing all your uh, insights and experience with us on CIO News. Thank you for having me. Absolute pleasure. Thank you for having me.